DJ software company Algorithm put its DJ software into virtual reality on the Apple Vision Pro. And we didn't even bother to cover that because we don't know anyone who's got one apart from our tutor laid back Luke. But now they've put their DJ software into the Meta or Oculus Quest. And that's a very different thing because there are 20 million of these out there. And for an extra $20, on top of this $300 virtual reality headset purchase, you can now DJ in VR and in mixed reality. And as I'm about to show you, that's quite a big deal because not only can you do it completely within this headset, music, vision, library, effects, everything, Not only is this unit being all those things, again, it's your headphones, it's your speakers, it's your vision, it's your music library, it's your DJ software, it's your hardware, it's the lot. You can actually turn off reality. So what you were seeing there was mixed reality. You were seeing what people don't normally see in our studio here at Digital DJ Tips. You're seeing kind of the mess behind the camera because I'm stood here with this on, looking out at you, and its cameras are showing what's going on in the room. I haven't really left the room. It's just superimposed the decks over it and the library and everything you were seeing there. You can turn all that off and you can take yourself into some completely different worlds entirely from the ones you might expect to some you don't. Take a look at this. Oh, there you are. You don't mind if I keep these on, do you? I, I, I quite like this. Um, although, when we went away from the virtual reality back to mixed, it was a bit like, oh, wasn't it? It's was like, oh, back in the real world, don't like that. Look, there's another really good thing. Not only can it do all that, but it can do this. And this is really unusual. I've never seen this on any virtual reality setup before. Because here, I've got a real hardware DJ controller. Just by selecting MIDI here, it will give me a different view. Now we're back in our virtual reality world here. This is the kind of nice lounge that I like to DJ in. Uh, but I've got a, light, a, a slightly different setup because now it's given me kind of these kind, kind of tasteful transparent decks you can see in front of me. But it's given me a cutout for the DJ gear. So now I can DJ on real gear. Now I've got this cable coming from the unit itself. There is no computer here. Everything's going on inside the headset. The software is running inside here, the music library is inside here, but what it's done now is exactly what a laptop would do if you plugged a DJ controller into a laptop. It's taken the MIDI and the audio through this cable, and so now I've got the control of the music via here. In virtual reality. And it's using the audio interface. So out of the back of here, I've got my 
speakers uh, and I could plug headphones in as well this is one of the shortcomings we'll talk about a few of the shortcomings in a bit but I could in theory plug some headphones in and be headphone monitoring with this as well if I wanted two cables kind of dangling from my head like some, some kind of mad science experiment so this means that you could potentially play in clubs and that is something they've already tested check this out He's clearly having fun there, and I've seen the full film. It's, uh, it's a performance that he does completely on this in front of his, his fans, and so you can do that. But is it for you? Is it something that you should be interested in? Well, I'll cut to the chase. If you've got one of these, if you've got a Meta or Oculus Quest 2 or 3 or 3S or Pro, just go and spend the $20 and get it. Play with it. You can plug in your Apple, Tidal, Beatport, Beatsource, etc. Streaming services, and you can have a go. I mean, it's it's a it's a, almost a risk-free punt. It's a one-off payment for the software, right? So you'd be silly not to. It's a lot of fun, but. In order to give you a better sense of how it works and what they've put in here when it comes to the real art of DJing, we're going to go back and look at some of the features. I'll click through some of the bits and pieces in the software and so that you can see the, the amount of it that's kind of a game and the amount of it that's, that's real DJing, if you like. I'll also talk you through some interesting ways that you can set this up that we haven't already touched on. But then I'll come on to the shortcomings of it and the one big thing that I think algorithm needs to do if they want this to stick. Uh, and then I've got a couple of ideas about how they could do that as well, which is how we'll end off this film. For now though, I'm gonna put this back on uh, and let's take another look inside at some of the features of the software. So when you first load the software, you get this screen here. You can choose classic, which is the decks I've got down below me now. You can choose MIDI, which I've shown you with a controller plugged in, and there's a quite useful tour there as well. Settings are some of the DJ settings. So here we've got things like quantize, what happens when you load a track, how the transitions are, uh, and the uh, default effects and scratch mode and so on. So you can see that it might be uh, a kind of gamified environment, but there's some serious DJ stuff going on in there as well for you to choose from. So let's go to the classic decks I've got here. And the controls down the bottom here show you something important about the way they've thought this through. Because this is not trying to be classic DJ gear. I mean, to start with, no one uses turntables anymore, right? So sorry if you're a turntable DJ, but most of us don't. So they've gone back to basics with that. And you can pick up and put down the needle where you want it. You can see that here, it's moving along to show where we are on the waveform. It's really nice. I mean, it's just gamifies the whole thing, but also it feels very genuine. You can change the speed of the track and it actually does play. Change the speed of the playing track there as well. So as well as that, then we've got, as you've seen before, if I press this button here, we've got the music here on record and it's very, very satisfying to pull a record out and drop it onto a deck like that. And so they've gone for a mixture of kind of how DJing's been done in the past with obviously very much how it's uh, being done right here at the cutting edge of now, which is curious because it's very different to the only other VR I've seen for this setup, which is from a company called Tribe and Tribe, basically take what I've got here, let's turn those decks off, turn the records off so you can see better. Tribe have got basically a pro mixer and two pro CDJs and put the whole lot into VR. So if you don't own this kind of gear, you can kind of figure out how to use it, which is, yes, yeah, it's validity in that. It's a learning tool. It's a good way of learning how to use club gear if you don't own it. But it's almost like a flight simulator as opposed to a, a game, if you like. We're looking at the whole thing reimagined for VR here from DJ. So they've come from a different approach. So hovering up here are our waveforms for the loaded tracks with the artwork and so on. I mean, it's all DJ software stuff kind of atomized into VR, isn't it? It's nothing here that's unusual. Clicking on this button here will bring up the library. And then in the library, you get a choice of all kinds of ways of getting music. So at the moment, I'm in the, the free music that comes with it, of which there is a lot. But you also can have Apple Music, Tidal, SoundCloud, Beatport, Beatsource, and your own files. 
It's a bit fiddly to get them onto there. You have to use the Android file transfer utility on a laptop, but you can get your own music into this, or you can just use the Apple Music route, which we've talked about when we've reviewed their software in the past. It's a, another way of getting your own tracks into here, but it is a streaming first uh, approach to music here. So once you're in here then, and you're choosing your tunes to play, you can just click on a tune, uh, and then it will load onto the deck that you've got set here. So that's why this is for deck one, and this is for deck two. So if I want to get this track here onto deck one, I'll just click it, and there it goes, it's onto deck one. Now, once you've got everything set up here, and you're ready to DJ, you can go back to things like the effects and so on. Now I'm going to go to a different environment just to make uh, the what we're seeing a little bit cleaner here. So let's go to somewhere we haven't been before. Let's go to a skate park. Oh, hear that ocean. Lovely. Right, so with apologies to everyone who's here, uh, we're going to take a look at some of the features here then. So effects is the first one. You've actually seen all of this stuff. So now you get this panel that comes up right in front of your face here with looping for each side. And you also get the loop changes here, so you can do those loop rolls like I was showing you. And this is where I was triggering the effect. It's an XY pad. Uh, you move this way, you get the effect. You move this way, you get a filter applied to the effect as well. Moving on to here, we have our EQs, low, mid, and high. They're sliders for all of them because it's easy to do that with your hand. And then the filter per channel as well. And then you've got your cue points here as well. There's so four more underneath making eight per channel. For straight mixing, you can just turn that off and you get your view back again. This is an interesting button. This is headphone monitoring. So by pressing this, by putting your hand over one of the ear cups, it will play you the other deck, the one that the audience isn't hearing. It's almost like a, an instant split cue with this hand gesture. It's really nice, but if it confuses you, you don't want it, you can turn it off like that. When a track is playing, you can quickly scrub through it like that. So really, you've got the full deck experience going on there. And they've done a really, really good job of it. It's fun. It's interesting, it's exciting, you will enjoy it. But there are some shortcomings, for sure. Let's talk through some of those now. And the first one, maybe I'm just old, maybe I'm just inexperienced with VR, but it's fiddly. It's difficult to grab controls in midair. Now you get used to it, you get used to realizing that kind of pointing your hand like this will give a, give a, a laser beam to, to select something and that going like this in a certain way works and, and, and in another way won't work and so on. But it's not as easy as DJing on real gear. Yes, you can DJ on real gear, but I don't really see the point in that, honestly. Yes, it's fun to have a VR headset on, but probably more fun for you than for your audience. And ultimately, unless you've got a, a good reason to want to use VR with real gear. And we're gonna end this whole film with a really good example of why you might want to do that. I think probably using sticks or using a laptop is still gonna be what the vast majority of people prefer to do in the DJ booth. I can't see this taking off with real DJ gear and in the DJ booth, other than as a curiosity, to be completely honest with you. And it doesn't even work with this kind of stuff. It only works with uh, about 40 controllers at launch. So. The other problem if you're using DJ gear is it's hard to do the monitoring. I was showing you the headphone monitoring like this, which is cool inside VR, but that doesn't work when you've got an external sound card plugged into DJ gear. Then you would literally have to have a set of headphones as well as a headset, and then it gets really weird. Talking about the music, it actually sounds really good. So there's speakers built into either side of this to make this effectively your kind of like everything audio wise. And they're good. They're not, the bass isn't quite there. So you move the bass EQ and up, up and down and not an awful lot happens, but it does sound good it's totally immersive you get lost in it straight away it's good enough for DJing on so don't think that this isn't going to give you good enough sound it is however that lack of headphone monitoring uh, elegantly with your DJ gear it, it kind of like makes that a non-starter for me anyway so we have got other ways of getting what you're doing out to the audience at the moment I recorded it what you were watching then was a recording but you can also cast so it's got inside the software a way of casting what you're doing out the problem there is that there's delay just like with Bluetooth speakers there's delay when you're DJing and casting so that's not the best way of getting your getting what you're doing out to the world audio wise at least uh, so Fiddly, a little bit 
weird around some of the ways you set it up. Uh, and the big DJ thing that people say, oh, it hasn't got that, there's no point, is stems. Look, this is a $300 headset. They could have put stems in here, by the way, I asked them, but what they wanted to make it backwardly compatible with the Quest 2. And because of that, they decided to leave them out. And honestly, if you wanted to DJ with cutting edge stems and stuff, do you know what I mean? It's an either or at the moment with VR. I, th I think that's, that's, that's just fine. The biggest problem, and this is the one they need to address if this is going to stick, is that it's a very insular experience. Yes, we've seen SK doing it in front of an audience. Yes, I get all that, but that's not what people are going to do. People are going to buy this. They're going to buy $20 worth of software, stick it on the Oculus in their household, and they're going to do it. And it's going to effectively, as soon as that goes on, they're in their own world. And in my experience, watching my kids with VR, that's not how it is. They put it on. Yes, they leave our world behind but they go into another world with other people. They're playing shared games. It's a communal experience within the, within the VR uh, apps that they're using. Algorithm needs to fix that. They need to find communal experiences. There's two ways. You bring other people into the VR world with you or you get what you're doing out to other people. Bringing it into the VR world surely is coming. You saw some of those environments there. There's other people milling around. There's no reason they can't be real people. There's no reason you can't have listening parties, dancing parties, other people looking over your shoulders as you're DJing, people taking over the decks and so on. I've got no doubt that that's all coming, which will kind of fix the within VR side of it, which is exciting. But I've got another purpose for this. I think this would make a great way of live streaming your DJ sets. Think about it. You could be anywhere in the world. You could be in the grubbiest room in the, in the most nondescript tower block in a place that you hate. Put this on. You can be anywhere you want and you can share that with the world. They need to do a couple of things to make that possible, which I've discussed with them. And they even showed me within like a few minutes uh, a mock-up based on some of the things I was suggesting. So have no doubt that the programmers are capable of doing what I'm about to say. So if you're going to be live streaming with this, you need three things. You need to get comments in. So they showed me a comment window with uh, Twitch working, like plugging it into Twitch, their API and all that. Immediately, just he went off and did it. So Stefan, good lad. Uh, and then I put it on and suddenly there's all the comments coming through. So you can have your comments coming through. It's got a microphone built in already on the headset. So you can then have a button to press or hold up a microphone to your mouth or something. Be careful with what gesture you choose there, algorithm. People might misinterpret it. But you could have a hand gesture that says, I'm now on a microphone. And then turn on the microphone, dip the music, and then you can be responding to comments in the live stream, which is great. Uh, and then the other thing you need is kind of a view that isn't just what you're seeing. People need to see you. And again, I discussed it with them and they said, look, we can have it so that there's a kind of like a simulated avatar of you behind the decks and it can switch from one to the other. When you're talking, maybe it goes to the view from the front and when you're DJing, it goes back to your decks and so on. So I think this would make a wonderful way of live streaming DJ sets. That actually really excites me, that idea. So that needs fixing. They need to stop it being such an insular experience. But it's just the beginning. This is a version one and I think it's excellent. It's a lot of fun. We've enjoyed reviewing it. We've enjoyed playing with it, especially as someone who's completely new to VR. I took to it very quickly. I gave it to my daughter. She took to it in about 15 seconds and wouldn't let me have the headset back for a while. So difference in generations there, of course. The younger you are, the more you're going to take to this stuff without the friction that I felt as a middle-aged bloke. Uh, and I did say that there's something I wanted to show you. Now, we started with Layback Luke. So I thought we'd go and end with Layback Luke because Layback Luke has designed a DJ controller. Again, if you missed the beginning, Layback Luke is our tutor, but he's also a, a tech fiend. He loves new technology. He did a DJ set in VR with the Apple Vision Pro when this software was launched for that and so on. But Luke has got a DJ controller, the Mix Tour Pro. And the Mix Tour Pro is a way of controlling four decks in the Pro booth. And, and Luke does this, he, he props his phone up at the back and he DJs to the biggest festivals on just this. But conspicuously what it's missing is decks. In the next version of Algorithms DJ for Meta Quest, you're gonna have a hybrid mode where you can take this controller, put it down, have the VR around you and have virtual decks. So you can add the decks to this in VR. And I think that's cool. And here's a quick sneak peek of it. This is a world exclusive. No one else has got this screenshot. It just shows that we are really at a version one here with DJ4 MetaQuest. It's very exciting where this is going. And again, I've enjoyed reviewing it. If you haven't got the, this is a 3S, it's $300. If you haven't got this, it's going to be on many Christmas present lists in households all over the world. Like I say, it's 20 million of these out there already. 
Think about getting one, and if you do get one alongside the, you know, the Beat Saber and all the other games that everyone plays, think about investing $20 in DJ for MetaQuest. I don't think you'll regret it. It's not the future of DJing, but it could be a part of what keeps DJing relevant as it moves up to the next generation and the one after that, because these things are only going to get smaller and cheaper, and the capability is only going to go through the roof over time. Thanks for watching. This has been Phil in the Digital DJ Tips Studio with another review. If you've enjoyed this, then come and join our community. It's free. Go to Digital DJ tips.com click join and we will see you again very soon until then get good get out there and make the moments